dearly beloved ones i welcome you back those who are hearing us all this while and those who are hearing us for the first time you are heartily welcome here we want to deep into the truth of god because we love god and the word of god says that those who love him all things work together for them all things work together for those who love god and who are the people who love god the people who love god are people who hear his word continually continuously because if you don't love god it will not even bother you to not come to you to be concerned with his word but if you love him you want to hear from him and we want to know the truth concerning god as people who love him the word of god said and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are the call according to his purpose the lord jesus said that it is my sheep who hear my voice so if somebody is not of christ the person will not hear anything concerning christ so when you are hearing or you are eager to hear concerning christ something concerning christ then you are his flock because it's only the flock of christ who hear him the lord jesus said to the people the crowd when they were following him he said unless my father called you you can't come to me so if you are coming closer to christ to hear him it means that the father is drawing you to him when peter confessed to jesus that you are the christ the son of the living god they said it's my father who revealed it to you matthew chapter 16 verse 16 and 17 so when you are saying that jesus is christ the son of the living god it means that the father is revealing things to you and he said to peter that you are peter upon this rock i'll build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it and i'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatever you bind here on earth is bound in heaven what you lose on earth is loose in heaven so if you are confessing that jesus is christ the son of the living god you are built upon the rock and the gate of hell will not prevail against you when you confess that jesus christ the son of the living god you are built upon the rock and the gate of hell will not prevail against you and you have the keys of the kingdom of god in your hand so anything you bind here on earth is bound in heaven the thing is bound in heaven so you may not know it you may not see it but i want you to know that as somebody who believes that jesus is christ first you are built upon the rock and whatever you burn here on earth spawn have you have that power that power is in your mouth whatever you bind here on earth is bound in heaven the thing can struggle whatever but it is bound in heaven and what you lose the thing may go through anything but it is loosed in heaven so this leads us to one popular preaching that are coming up in our days is that preaching says <clears throat> excuse me once safe forever safe we want to delve into it and look at the truth in it and the lies in them in it once safe forever safe and people are preaching this kind of doctrine yes i love them the reason why i, love, I don't hate them as those who are preaching maybe the gospel concerning Ma Moses or the gospel concerning Malachi the reason why I hate them is that 
In fact, they are destroying what Christ built. When you are preaching the gospel concerning Moses or concerning concern, uh, gospel concerning Malachi, you are eroding everything that Christ did. Because the word of God says that Christ became of no effect to anyone who just fell and saw by the law. The person is falling from grace. Why? If anyone just finds himself by the law, he falls from grace. What is law? The law in the Bible concerns covenants. The law is the title deed of a covenant which Moses made. And even throughout the Old Testament, the law was the element the old covenants, the law of Moses, the law of Malachi, or whatever, the laws or the the law it called the law and the prophets. So these were doctrines in the Old Testament that concern the covenant. The covenant deeds. They are commandments they are sacrifices, they are ordinances of the covenants. And we have taught, we have learned moral, all over, all of moral and moreover that covenants are for fathers. Children are his. So if there's any deed of a covenant, it is not for the children. The children become hears of the promises of the covenant. That's what we re have read through and seen through the Old Testament. So when we are talking about the law of a covenant, it does not concern that law. Whatever it is, does not concern the children. So that was why it is in the Bible that. Christ become of no effect to anyone who just finds out by the law. You fall from the grace. Because the grace is upon the children. Grace is not upon fathers who are to ratify covenant. Jesus has to die before we can inherit his covenant. Hebrews chapter 9, 16 and 17. Because the testator has to die. When Abraham obeyed the voice of God, and obey his commandments, status, and laws. The Lord said to Isaac, I'll bless you because your father Abraham obeyed me. Genesis 26, 4 and 5. That was what it means to be a child of a covenant for the father. Jesus said, anyone who believe in me shall not perish. This is the pivot of that doctrine. That's what I said. The doctrine that says that one safe forever safe has the truth in it. It's because Jesus himself who said it. Jesus said to a Pharisee, John chapter 3, verse 16, a Pharisee called Nicodemus, God so loved the world, I gave his only begotten son, Whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. So that's what the people were trying to say that if you believe in Jesus, you are forever safe. That should be the truth. Not one safe, forever safe. But if you believe in Jesus, you are forever safe. That's what it's supposed to be. Because Jesus, that's what Jesus said it. Again, in John chapter 6. When we look at the verse 40 and 51, Jesus says similar things. John chapter 6, verse 40. So whatever any person is saying, maybe they didn't quen very well. One safe, when you are one safe, you are forever safe. So when you believe in Jesus, you are forever safe. That should be the appropriate caption of that word that's what i said i don't hate them jesus said 
This is the will of him that sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. John chapter 6, verse 40. Verse 51, he said, I am the living bread who come down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. John chapter 6, verse 40 and 51. Then John chapter 10, from verse 27, there's two verses to 29, John chapter 10. Verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I will give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father who gave them me is greater than them all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So this is where they made the foundation of what they want to say or build. It was Jesus' own words. Again, Apostle Paul says something in Romans 10. This is where the truth is <laughs> really lies. What did they read the tale of this lies? Romans 10. In fact, verse 9 and 10, Jesus, uh, Paul said, Apostle Paul said, if anyone confess the Lord Jesus and believe in his heart that God has raised him from the dead, the person shall be saved. Shall. For with the heart man believe unto righteousness and with mouth confession salvation is made. So when you believe in your heart that God has raised Christ from the dead and you say that Christ Jesus is the Lord then you are saving yourself. When we say that we believe that Christ is risen from the God and raised Christ from the dead, you are believing righteousness. That's how it come, righteousness come about. In that Romans 10, the Apostle Paul, beginning from verse 1, said his praying, his heart desire and prayer for, to God for Israel is that they will be safe. The Apostle was praying for Israel. That they will be safe. Why he said he knew that they have the seed of God, but not according to knowledge. See, somebody can love God and have the seed, but the person may be ignorant. This is where the problem is. It is ignorance that destroys the people of God. It's not anything. So if somebody is say claim to be safe, or let's say he believes in Christ, but is ignorant. The person, we cannot guarantee that the person is safe forever. Because Hosea, in the scriptures, the Hosea said this. Hosea 4, 6. He said, my people are perished for lack of knowledge. He said that. Then Isaiah also repeat, repeated that. Isaiah chapter 5, 13 to 15. He even, see, he even added that they are going to hell. Because they lack knowledge. And... Even the glorious men, once among them, are all famished. They are all poor. They are all, you see them in their nations, how they are being destroyed by people who don't even know God. So that is what we need to understand. These things we need to understand. We can't be saying that people are forever safe because they believe in Jesus when we are seeing them being destroyed and even in the very place where they are saying this people cannot even come out when it is 6 p.m because of the fear of the people who have taken the land to be this these are bandits these are terrorists so armed robbers star. these are kidnappers even kidnapping inside the church and we are still saying that the people are forever safe, then something is wrong with what you are saying. Why? Because Jesus said, if the people believe in him, then they will have eternal life. If they believe in him. He said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He told Nicodemus, John chapter 3, from verse 1, if we come down, 
verse 14, as Moses lifted up the serpent, the wilderness, so the Son of Man will be lifted up. That whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believes on the begotten Son will have everlasting life. For God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him will be saved. That is the emphatic word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on him. Shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. Because his father is mighty enough to keep the people. So that word that is just there is believe on him. And he, Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe, believe on me through the gospel. In my name, they will cast out the devils. That is the sign that the people believe and have everlasting life. That is the sign. It is not just, I believe in Jesus. When you don't even know what it means to believe in Jesus. In my name, those who believe in me, they will cast out the devils. They will take up the serpents. They will lay hands and bring recovery to their lands. That's, these are the people who believe in Christ. So when we are preaching that they are safe and forever safe. And we are not seeing them portraying any sign. Then, number one, what we are preaching to them is not the truth. Number two, if you are preaching even the truth to them, we are not telling them what it means to believe. It's not just hearing the word, but acting on the word will show whether we believe or not. Number two, the reason why Jesus came on the earth was to prepare the world towards the kingdom of God. It was a preparation. Why? Because if I've listened to the timeline for the kingdom of God, which also preach in this place, search for that and listen to it carefully. According to the statue which the book of Genesis saw in Daniel chapter 2, there was a timeline when the kingdom of God will be established on earth. You look at getting to the leg, the leg of the statue, which was the iron, represent the fourth kingdom, fourth and the last kingdom, before the feet of the nations or kingdoms made up of clay and iron were formed. That fourth kingdom was the Roman Empire. When Jesus came, the Roman Empire was still on earth. We've studied about all these things. So when Jesus was saying that, if you see me casting out devils, the kingdom of God has come upon you. It was a time when the Roman Empire or the fourth kingdom or the iron kingdom was ruling. So Jesus did not come to establish the kingdom of God at that time because according to the scripture in Daniel chapter 2, it is the feet, when the feet are formed, that's where the rock that was taken up, picked up without a hand, will smash them and then will expand. And that's the kingdom of God. So when Jesus came, the Roman power was still ruling. The Roman Empire came to an end 476 AD after Christ gone. 476 years. The last apostle died by AD 100. So still the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God was not there because the Roman Empire was still there. But the Roman Empire is power. And a, a person who was used to orchestrated the destruction of the Roman Empire was a German. And again, we saw that the formation of the nations started from the colonizations. Divisions of the lands, landmarks, where the continent of Africa was divided in Asia and South America and Caribbean. The formation of the nations were formed. 
the revolution that took place in Europe that even break the powers there and then nations were formed. And, and, and again, it was a German who was used to break the powers of Europe for the nations to come out and then they give names to themselves. Countries started to name themselves after their independence. So these nations were properly formed. Those who are the Cray or those who are Iron. Places like the United States, they fought and they formed their nation. And all the territories, then the kingdoms, the nations were formed. And that very recent, the formation of the nations happened, um, complete of the formation happened recently. By 1960, most of the continent, uh, countries in the continent of Africa were gained their independence and naming themselves. We are no more Rhodesia, we are called Zimbabwe, we are no more Burkina, we are no more Upper Vota, we are called Burkina Faso, we are no more Gold Coast, we are called Ghana, Nigeria came, one, all the countries can have form. It's recently, it's not long ago. It's less than 40, 50 years ago. So if there's something like the kingdom of God coming on earth, it is this time. But it's the time that the nations been formed. We have the iron ones, you can mention the United States, maybe you know, Germany, maybe you know, Great Britain, maybe run France, maybe run, and then the smaller ones who have no power, they are just like watching what is happening. Now is the time that Jesus said the gospel will be preached. And what is the meaning of the gospel? The gospel is preached. And who are those who believe in the gospel? Apostle Peter said, the gospel is the incorruptible word of God. And it gives birth. The people who receive the gospel are born again. 1 Peter 1, 23, 25. That is why the gospel is very important. That is why the gospel should not be corrupted. The gospel should be pure. Because the gospel is an incorruptible seed that is giving birth to a people who are called sons of God. These people are like Christ. Matthew 5 verse 9 says, Bless are, Jesus said, Bless are the peacemakers. They shall be called the sons of God. That way there, if you are reading King James children, it's he us, sons of God. Galatians 3, 26. You are all sons of God. That word children there in King James is he us, sons of God. So you have to understand that in the Greek word, children are not just children. We have the Nepios and we have the Heos. Galatians 4 from verse 1 to 7. You are no more servants. You are sons. Because children are just like servants. You are no more Nepios, but you are Heos. But when you are saying that somebody is the Heos of God, you are looking at Christ himself. Because Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10 to 11 is saying that Christ he has sanctified a people. He who sanctified and those who are sanctified are the same. So it's not a shame to call them brethren because they are all sons of God like him as he is the son of God. And he told them that whatever I can do you can also do and greater I'm going to the Father. John 14, 12. So these people call the sons of God who are coming out of the gospel, the incorruptible word, they are like Christ. They are going to bring the kingdom of God to smash the nations. That is all what it means if you believe you are forever safe. That's all what it means. Jesus said, if I were the finger of God, cast out the devil, the kingdom of God is come. He said in the time when the kingdom of God cannot come at that time. Luke chapter 11, from verse 1 and 2, 
20 to 23, the apostles asked him, teach us to pray as John the Baptist taught his disciples. Today, people are taught to pray just as the prophet taught. That is wrong. And that cannot be for people who are for safe and forever safe. It's the one who prays, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done here on earth. That's your prayer. But I have to cast out the devil. I, the son of God. If I were the power of God, cast out the devil, then the kingdom of God come. Because if the strong man keep his palace, his kingdom, Satan's kingdom, when it's still on earth, everything he has is in part. Nothing can disturb. He's still controlling. He's still putting his fear on the people. He's still ruling by bandits, by terrorists, by corrupt people, destructive people. They're still ruling. Nothing is wrong. You can tell that I, the one determine who should have money here on earth. Look at the glory of God, Lord Jesus. It is me who determine who should have them. Yes, Satan can stand in the face of Jesus and say that. Because he's a strong man. But when the stronger than him come upon him, he sees him, burn him, sees everything in his hands, and then distributes. That is when the saint of God can have access to God. It is the sons of God among the saints of God who should cause the spouse of the earth to be distributed among the people of God. There are sons of God among people of God. But to chapter 5 from verse 3 to 12, Jesus preached about them. Some of them have no power, but not the peacemakers, not the sons of God. They are the ones who should bring the rule of God, the peace of God here on earth. So Apostle Paul said to them, 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 6, I is taught therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, those in authority, that they should be quietness, peaceable life, honesty, and godliness. For this is what God is quiet from you. These are the people we can say, they are forever safe, once safe. Don't say, okay, what are you talking about here? Who are you talking about? They are forever safe, once safe. But if you read Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 to 12, read Jesus very well. Just some people are already the heirs of the kingdom of God. Poor and pure in heart. They are they, 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 they shall see God. Poor in spirit, yes, the kingdom of God. Excuse them for righteousness sake. The uh, kingdom of God is yes. Merciful, they shall receive mercy. Those who are persecuted for my sake, they should rejoice. But then he singled out a group calling them peacemakers. He said, these are the sons of God. And who are they? These are the people who receive the gospel. Not the one who preach the gospel. They preach the gospel, they are going to be persecuted and be killed for his sake. But he said, those who receive the gospel, go and preach the gospel to them. Those who believe the gospel, they shall be safe. Believe and they are baptized by the gospel. They shall be safe. Don't forget that the baptism here is talking about dipping somebody in water. Believe, baptized by the gospel. When Peter was preaching the gospel in the house of colonials, he said, I'm not preaching the baptism of John the Baptist. That one expired before this word came. And when he was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. As John the Baptist himself said, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, 
I baptize you with water, but the one after me will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Then Jesus told them, Acts the one from verse 5, you are going to be baptized not long day from here. As John the Baptist said, go into the world and then preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized, they will be saved. For as many as have been baptized into Christ has put on Christ. Galatians 3, 27. This is what it means to believe. And these people who believe, they are born again to become saints of God like Christ Jesus. And they are not people who are just in the classroom or church room dancing and so be serious when you are telling people that they are once safe, forever safe. When any little thing from the Old Testament is mixed in their life, the doctrine that they receive, the gospel preached to them is no more pure. It's no more that incorruptible seed. The word of God in Galatians 5, 4 says that Cry become of no effect to any one of you, just for so by the law, you fall from grace. A little living, verse 9, living the whole lamp. So Jesus warned them in Matthew chapter 16, verse 6, 12, and 12. Take heed of the living of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And these are the doctrines which they are teaching. Separates everything concerning. Obey this covenant, do this covenant word, bring this tithe, bring this seed, bring this anointing oil, bring this offering, lay this altar, obey this commandment. Separate them completely from these people. If you want them to have the power to control the nations, break down the power of the devils and destroy whatever is affecting the people. And let them have that eternal life you are preaching. Take those things from them. These are special people. These sons of God who are males and females, the people who are hearing the gospel, these are special people that should not come in contact to anything that called covenant deeds. Because that will corrupt them, make them ineffective. Their words will have no power. These people have the rod of God in their mouth. They have the sword of God in their mouth, smashing nations, smashing the evil. Vengeance of the Lord is in their hands. Look at one of the preachings that's coming. Vengeance is the Lord. You understand this? These are the people who the gospel is preached to them. When Jesus said, March 10, 4, this gospel shall be preached again. And warned that they are very late. They should be careful from this destructive and deceptive miracles. They should not follow anything. So Matthew 24, 11 to 14, then from verse 24 to 26, he was speaking to these people. The reason why we are all very aggressive with the gospel is because of these people. Their manifestation brings the end to demonic activities on earth. They are manifested to destroy the works of the devil. First John 3, it says that the Son of God is manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Romans 8, 19 says, the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And they are made by the gospel of Jesus Christ. May God give you understanding. So that when you are preaching, once safe, forever safe, you understand what you are saying. Stay blessed.